Now we're ready to find the primary uh, term for this section here. What is a linear combination? So we've defined now what, what a vector means, right? These are things that belong to a vector space and vectors are essentially these things that we can add and scale according to the standard laws of a vector space. So now a linear combination, to define that, take, a, take some list of vectors here. So V1, V2, up to Vp. This is P many vectors from some, some vector space. Um, and take the, some same number of scalars, C1, C2, up to Cp. These are scalars that belong to the field, and our vectors are belonging to an F vector space. And then define some new vector Y as the following uh, expression, right? Y is equal to C1, V1. So we take the scalar product there. We add that to, and this would be a, a vector sum here. We add that to C2 plus V2, add that to C3, V3, all the way down to Cp. VP. And so in this situation, Y is then defined to be a linear combination of the vectors V1, V2 up to VP with coefficients C1, C2 up to CP. So a linear combination is any, any expression of vectors which combines together these additions and uh, scalar products of these things, right? Now it's very possible, of course, that the scalars here could just be one, in which case any sum of vectors is in fact a linear combination. Um, it could also be that P itself is the number one, that is there's only one vector in the combination. So a scalar multiple of a vector is a linear combination. And so a linear combination is essentially the generalization of vector sums and scalar products. That is, a linear combination is all of the algebraic ways we could combine vectors together uh, using scalar multiplication and vector addition. And so we're looking for all the ways we can combine vectors together. And those are each examples of linear combinations. Uh, now, if we just look at two examples here, uh, this first one, let's compute a linear combination for a, for a vector in C2, right? So this is the complex vector space with two entries. So our vectors will look like column vectors with two components uh, using complex numbers here. So in this linear combination, we're going to have two times the vector 3i and we have i times the vector 2i and 3 plus 5i. Now remember, with working with complex numbers, it's going to be necessary to remember that i is the square root of negative 1. Uh, and particularly what you need to know is that i squared is equal to negative 1. If you know that, you're going to be fine here. So when it comes to uh, linear combinations, they follow the same order of operation as you're used to from algebra. Multiplication takes precedence over addition. So we're going to first do the scalar products here. So 2 times the vector 3i will give us 6 2i for the first vector. And for the second vector, when we, just, when we scale by i, you're going to get i times 2, which is a 2i. But then you're going to get i times i, which is negative 1. So I'm going to put the real number first. Uh, for the next one, you're going to get i times 3, which is a 3i. And then you're going to get i times 5i, which is a negative 5, like so. So we did the scalar product. Now we add together uh, the numbers. So we're going to add together the first component, and we're going to add together the second component. And these are complex numbers, so add them together according to like terms. The real parts go together, and the imaginary parts go together. So 6 minus 1 is a 5. And then 0i plus 2i is just a 2i. The first number didn't have an imaginary part. For the second component, there's no real part on the first one. So you're just going to get a negative 5 there. And then for the imaginary part, you get 2i plus 3i, which is a 5i. And so that gives us the linear combination of the numbers right there. Nothing, nothing too complicated there. Uh, then, as another example, uh, this one here, I, I forgot to mention, this is going to be a linear combination over the vector space Z3, 3. What that means here uh, is, remember, you might want to rewrite this thing a little bit. This is going to be Z3. Uh, I guess I should write my Z like this. Z3 cubed, right? So what this right here means, you're working mod 3. So our integers will reduce mod 3. All numbers should be either 0, 1, or 2. And then the 3 up here as a superscript just means our vectors will have 3 components in the array. So when you look at this right here, we're just adding together, well, we take the linear combination 0, 1, 2, plus 2 times 1, 1, 1, plus 2 times 1, 0, 2. Uh, so be aware that we're working mod 3 in this situation. Just like the last example, we're going to do all the scalar products first. 
So we get 0, 1, and 2. We're going to get 2, 2, 2. And then lastly, we're going to get 2, 0, 4. Now, as we're working mod 3, there is no such number as 4 exactly. It should be reduced down to be 1. And so remember, when you work mod 3, 2 times 2 is actually equal to 1 because uh, 4 and 1 are congruent modulo 3. So we do our scalar multiplication. That changed. That, that did change a little bit, right? So instead of working over rational numbers, working mod 3, there was that reduction right here. Now we add these numbers together, which in case you're going to get 0 plus 2 plus 2. You're going to get 1 plus 2 plus 0. And you're going to get 2 plus 2 plus 1, like so. If we just add these together as integers, we end up with 4, 3, and 5. But remember, as we're working mod 3, we want to reduce all of these things down. And so in the end, 4 reduces to 1, like we saw. 3 would reduce to 0, and 5 would reduce to 2. And so this linear combination would turn out to be the following vector, 1, 0, 2. Um, I do want to mention that as students are working through exercises, if you're checking your answer with like the back of the book or anything like that, be aware that when you're working over a finite field such as Z3, all the vectors will be reduced modulo, whatever, whatever the modulus is. So if you didn't do that, your answer might look different from the answer you're comparing it to. It's not that you're wrong, it's just you didn't reduce it. And therefore you need to recognize your answer might be equivalent to the one presented in the back of the book there. And that's how one can compute a linear combination. It's no more difficult than adding vectors and scaling them based upon the arithmetic of the associated field.